Hi everyone, welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast, episode number 89, the Josh Healy Hockey Journey, presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Pitlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we discover what the next big idea might be and begin the conversation, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, that I have the world's largest database of off-ice stick handling, passing, and hockey shooting drills, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck. Just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and you want to schedule an in-person, off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's SweetHockeyCoach.com, and watch the video on the homepage for instructions. Thanks, and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. My next guest is Canadian-born professional hockey player Josh Healy. His hockey journey began in Alberta, Canada, to a Division I scholarship, and currently is in his seventh season as a pro, playing in the AHL for the San Diego Gulls. Let me rephrase that. He's watching the San Diego Gulls as he's currently on the IR with an injury. Our paths crossed for the first time back in 2019 when Mr. Healy and my oldest son Rem played together with the Milwaukee Admirals in the American Hockey League. That's where I had a conversation with him about a business venture he's been working on in the background of his hockey career since he conceived it, I believe, when he was playing college hockey for the Ohio State Buckeyes. The coolest thing about his business venture is that it helps other hockey players, and I like that. And we're going to find out later in the show when we talk about his baby, the Sports Ox app, hockey's top recruitment platform for both male and female hockey players. We better get the conversation rolling because we got a lot to talk about. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Mr. Josh Healy to the show. Josh, welcome to the Hockey Journey Podcast. Coach Lance, it's uh, it's awesome to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. Yes, uh, we're we're in different environments. I was just uh, telling you a little bit about what I'm experiencing. We're going to be able to build igloos pretty easily here in Minnesota within the next 24 hours. We're supposed to get like a foot of, foot foot and a half of snow, and you, you poor baby, are in California, and you got a little rain going today. So you just better stay in and you know be safe. Yeah, it's, that's definitely one of the one of the perks about playing in San Diego is not only the beach, but the weather is not uh, not quite what it is back home for me or, you know, where you're at in Minnesota. So I'll definitely take the rainy days over the snowy days Absolutely. Uh, any day of the week. You learn, you earn that. So perfect segue. Um, how I like to start all the shows uh, where I'm interviewing someone is I'd like you to rewind the tape and let's take a moment to look in the rear view mirror. And go back to the beginning. Where did you grow up? What was your childhood like? Your parents, other siblings, friends, your introduction to hockey and other sports. Basically, tell the listeners in a nutshell what the heck it was like growing up, Josh Healy. For sure, for sure. So I'm um, born and raised in Edmonton, Alberta, south side. Um, you know, I had parents, very fortunate that my dad was a big hockey guy. He always pushed me. Um, wanted me to obviously be on the ice as much as possible and be the best player I could be. But I also had my sister who is two years younger than me and she's now playing for the Buffalo Buttes in the professional women's league. But she was always someone that would be on the outdoor rink with me and oh, wow. in the basement shooting and, and whatnot. So it was pretty cool to have her, um, you know, kind of working alongside me all those, all those years when we were, when we were younger. But I played my, my minor hockey for the Southside Athletic Club um you know was there for for quite a few years basically all all up until i was hitting uh junior hockey which i didn't actually go too far from home i played for the sherwood park crusaders in the alberta junior hockey league which was about a 20 minute drive from my my house so i could still live at home and go to school at home with all my buddies and then end up playing junior hockey you know just down the road which actually worked out pretty pretty cool uh for me and 
we had a pretty good group of guys that um, went on to play college. So I played two years in Sherwood Park and, like I said, had, had a pretty good group of guys I had grown up with that all kind of wanted to go the college route. And so um, played with them for, for two years and then I ended up getting a scholarship to the Ohio State University where hold on, hold on. I went. That, that's, that's way too fast. Some of you Canadians, you like to go really fast. You're driving in a Lamborghini right now, and I need you to back it up a little bit because there, it's not as smooth as that. You at 17, <laughs> you weren't even on the radar for anything. You weren't you weren't drafted in the NHL or anything or the major Canadian junior leagues. What happened? How did you uh, kind of get on the roadmap and get that next opportunity? No, yeah, you're definitely right. I was going to kind of go through it and, and come touched back on a few things but no it definitely wasn't uh it wasn't an easy path at all like when i was about 13 14 15 uh, i was still pretty small so at the time i think and now it's it's 15 years old the western hockey league draft but at the time it was 14 so i was never drafted um could definitely compete and play but just didn't have the size and and strength like a lot of the other other guys i was playing against so the western hockey league wasn't really an option for me um you know at 16 or 17 like it was for a lot of guys that i was playing with a lot of my buddies which was kind of hard to see because obviously you want to be the best player you can be and you want to compete and all these guys are getting drafted to the western hockey league and and they're taking that next step in their career and you're still you know playing midget um it ended up being a blessing in disguise i think for me and i think that's one thing i would want to stress to like a lot of parents out there it's not how big or how strong or how good you are at, you know, 16, 17, 18. It's how good you are, you know, in your twenties when you can really play in the NHL. So um, for me, my path was kind of, kind of forced to go ma or not major junior, just junior A. And that's when I ended up going to Sherwood Park for the Crusaders. And that first year when I was 17 was, was again, pretty big learning curve for me. I wasn't physically there. I was definitely getting there, but wasn't, you know, fully grown and mature. Like some of the 20 year olds were in that league at the time. Sure. So I had a pretty good year at 17, but didn't really have a lot of interest from colleges. And so I kind of went to the summer working really hard and, and wanted to really make a, an impact in my 18 year old year. And it wasn't until Christmas time um, that I really was on the radar of any, of any teams. And I had a really good, good first half to the, to the season, but for anyone who, you know, maybe isn't in, in the States, like in the USHL or, or, uh, you know, I was playing in a league where it's really heavily scouted. It's pretty tough to have a lot of teams kind of be high on you unless you're like above and beyond every other every other player. And for my game, I was more of like a – I was a good skater, pretty hard no shut down physical defenseman. So the the numbers didn't really attract a lot of people up to Sherwood Park yeah. and to the Alberta Junior Hockey League. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, so I actually got kind of fortunate. I ended up being invited to Team Canada West – uh, the tryouts, which is like the equivalent of the world juniors for the junior A. Yep. And I had a really, really good, good tur um, tournament there and a good tryout. I actually was uh, defense partners with Devon Taze, who's now uh, on the ice with Kale McCarr. So oh. that was pretty, pretty cool. It's pretty nice having him as, uh, as my right hand guy. But um, no, so it wasn't really till I was there and was on like that really big stage that I had a lot of teams reach out to me and want to fly me down and, and have me commit to their school. So I was again, young and you want everything to happen faster than it did, but I mean, it worked out the way it should have. And I believe everything happens for a reason. And it just took a little bit of time, but I got the exposure that, that I felt I should have been getting and everything, you know, it's kind of history as I, as I touched on, I ended up committing to the Ohio state university and, and went there for four years and had a really, really good, Good uh, experience there. Got my degree, majored in finance and specialized in investments, and uh, ended up, you know, signing an NHL deal at the end of that. But I know you kind of mentioned earlier there was there was no Western Hockey League draft for me. There was no NHL draft for me. It was all kind of just grinding along the way and, and just trying to work harder than everyone else to get noticed. And after my four years at school, I ended up signing a two-year NHL deal with the Calgary Flames. And you know, the rest is is kind of history. I've been playing pro playing pro sense so the that summer you're 17 and you're going into the summer and at that point you didn't know that you're going to get this junior a challenge uh, opportunity that was going to kind of change your trajectory 
you know, after that season as a 17 year old, did you do something different to prepare that, you know, for the, that upcoming season than you, than you did in the other off seasons? Did you add some, some other things that you didn't do in years past? I wouldn't say there's one thing specifically that I really changed. I, I mean, I still work just as hard. I was on the ice doing different things to, you know, elevate, elevate my game. I just think a lot of, a lot of it comes down to time. And for me, as I mentioned, I wasn't physically mature, you know, at, at 16, 17, like, you know, some other players are, I mean, I, I had guys with full beards on my team when I was, when I was 16 and yeah. um, I was still like, you know, five, four, 150 pounds. So I, I wasn't even close to, to being on that level strength wise. So I think just the physical maturity as it, as it creeped into my game, um, you know, when I was 18 and that summer, like, I took a really big step and I think that's what helped me just be able to compete longer, harder against bigger guys. And then obviously make more of an impact uh, shift in and shift out every night. So you go to college and you, uh, I'm, you're a pretty smart guy. You know, let's just call it what it is, you know, a lot smarter than me. <laughs> uh, you guys are <laughs> so doggone <laughs> smart. You, uh, and I don't know if it's because of uh, the internet, but I, I can't compete with a lot of you uh, younger people out there that uh, really have things dialed in. But let's, I want you to talk a little bit more about the, the college experience because, you know, it's, it's one thing to uh, love to play hockey, but, you know, when you're a student athlete and also have to compete at the highest level in sports, uh, it can be pretty challenging. Uh, was it challenging for you to kind of, uh, kind of get your process down or was it pretty seamless getting adjusted to that the next four years of your life? Um, it definitely wasn't seamless by any means. It just was another step um, in life. You know, like, as you mentioned, like there's not just hockey, you got to deal with time management and classes and, and being responsible for that, that as well. But I, if we're going to focus on the hockey side for a second here, like I just remember going from like Bantam to Midget, and that was, you know, an adjustment that took a year and a bit. And then you go from a uh, midget to junior, which again, just took some time to adjust. And then you get to the top of the pecking order, but then it starts again when you go to school. And I remember my first few practices, I was like way slower than everyone. And like the rate of plays and how fast they happened. Like I hadn't seen that before just because the Alberta hockey league, Alberta junior hockey league wasn't quite college. Right. right. So it took me a little while to adjust uh, to the practices. And then once you get up to that speed, you play a game. And I remember playing against Miami um, my first my first weekend. We had a couple guys now who are in, in the NHL, and they're going up and down the ice, back and forth. I'm on the ice trying to like contain them. I'm like, holy crap, this is a, a whole other level as well. So yeah. I think, uh, you know, it took about Christmas time till I, I adjusted as a, as a freshman, but it definitely was tough uh, mentally. Uh, to stay kind of sane through all that because you're trying to just do your best on the ice and you're obviously a step behind just because of um, you know coming into the league it's it's not something you've done before and then when you have you know calc classes and history classes and whatever else you got on the side you're trying to manage it definitely can be overwhelming so uh, I would say my freshman year definitely for the first semester was was a bit of a whirlwind but uh, once you make it through that you kind of you can ease up and schedule your classes a little better. And then you, you fall in the place with the team, you know, even more comfortable and um, you just start to enjoy this, enjoy it, enjoy the experience more than, uh, you know, worry about everything that's, that's not going right. So when I was, uh, when I was in college back in the, uh, <laughs> the late eighties, uh, they, they weren't doing it as they are today. But when you went in uh, to Ohio, that that first summer did they require you to go there and be there for the summer and take a class and get acclimated before the whole school year started the following year because i know that they do that today at pretty much all the colleges if i'm, if I'm not mistaken yeah i know they do that at a lot of schools they didn't do that for my first year um i had taken some classes my 18 year old year in the Alberta junior hockey league so i kind of had a bit of a step up going into school with that that year off in between uh, you know high school and, and college when you're just playing juniors 
but I think it wasn't until maybe my my junior year or senior year where they started bringing in uh, the freshmen to work out and kind of take a class. So that wasn't something I went through, but I mean, I definitely think it would have it would have helped um, and does help, obviously, because lots of teams are doing it now. Kind of get the guys used to you know what they're going to be dealing with that first semester. Sure. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, um, and the you're just setting up these student athletes for success. Then uh, you don't have to go in there scared. So um, I'm curious. Uh, you know, you you're you took you a little bit. You admitted to to, to make the the jump up to the college level. Um, as you're progressing through your college career, um, when did you start? thinking that you might be able to play after college? That's a, that's a good question. I mean, obviously you have the dream of like playing in the NHL and, and just playing professional hockey. And so for me as a, as a freshman, I kind of went in every day, just obviously trying to get better and kind of figure out my life. And I'd say like the first, the first semester uh, up until Christmas, it, it took a minute to kind of get my feet under me, but then the second half of that, that uh that year things went pretty well had a pretty good team pretty good leadership group um so things kind of started to fall into place but i i would say my my sophomore year i was i was good i wasn't great but i was starting to feel myself on the ice and it wasn't until my junior and senior year where i was like okay like this is this is something i'm gonna be good at because every year i just found like it took me maybe a year to get acclimated and then I started to really level my game up and that was no different going to professional hockey. So my first year in the Alberta league, I was okay. Second year, I was really good. My first year at college, I was, you know, okay. Second year, I got better. Third year, I was really good. Fourth year, I was, I was playing really, really good hockey. And then I go to, to Stockton. So that was Calgary's farm system at the time. And it, it starts all over again. You know, the first, 30 games I'm kind of just figuring out how to play pro hockey different schedule different uh different teams different just style of play all together and by the second half of, of that year I started to kind of feel myself and then the next year I was I was playing well and then every year since I feel like the game slows down a bit and gets easier and easier so um that's kind of been the pattern for me and I guess my only advice would be to the parents or players out there who are kind of struggling when they go to somewhere new is like just stick with it because it's eventually going to sort itself out and, you know, everything will end up the way it should. Yeah. Isn't that kind of cool? I want to go back to you and your sister. Um, you know, what, what other extra stuff did you guys do? I mean, she's playing pro hockey right now. You're playing pro hockey right now. Uh, your, your parents did something right. What are some of the extra stuff that your parents had you you doing besides your team practices and games? And did you play any other sports growing up? I didn't really play any other sports growing up. Uh, my sister really didn't either. We kind of just like would like rollerblade around in the summer, keep busy that way. Like we were always very active, um, which is, which is awesome. But yeah, like I wouldn't say there's one thing that we really did, did differently than probably, you know, a lot of the other guys, like, we did a lot of power skating when we were younger, which helped. Um, I think today's it, the game's evident, right? You got to be able to skate, so that definitely helped me. And who was your her. T? Who was your instructor um, for that? There's a there's a a girl back home, and the name is escaping me. Of I think it's called Quantum Speed. So it was um, her name was Vanessa. I gotta I gotta go back and check and. And find her last name, but yeah, so she helped us out quite a bit. I think there's still quite a quite a few Western Hockey League guys that go to her, and maybe some pro guys that go to her now back in Edmonton. But yeah, she's uh, she's been someone who really helped me. Um, I will say one thing I wish I kind of did more of is more stick handling and the kind of skill work. I'm sure you can relate to that, Lance, a little bit. Yeah. Um, but no, like for me and my sister, we like we're obviously very skilled and talented and, and had some pretty good genetics to help us along the way. But if there's one thing I would have gone back and done a little more of, it would have been more stick handling with the head up and just different, different ways to handle a puck better because um, I'd say that's one thing I still got to work on today. And and I do work on it today, but it'd be nice if when I was younger and, you know, developing those neural pathways, if, if they would come a little easier. Yeah. And, you know, the same thing. I mean, I'm quite a bit older than you, uh, double that. Um, 
but you, uh, you know, there, there just wasn't any instructors in my area other, you know, to, to get that high level expert training. Uh, so you just kind of made do with what you had. And that was usually a piece of plywood and net in the backyard or side of the house. And you just rip pucks. That's about all we did. And like you said, rollerblade, and then we'd play tennis and stuff as kids. That was about it. Yeah, no, you're, you're definitely right to that point. Like now I feel like there's a skills coach on every block you can find, you know, everyone's got their own thing and, and whatever else they're promoting. But I feel like, it's uh, not something that I really grew up with. It was kind of coming up, you know, when I was playing. And the last few years, it's really been evident that, you know, you need a, you need a skills. I shouldn't say you need a skills coach, but, um, you know, it's good to have a skills coach. Definitely someone can work with you, um, you know, off the ice, on the ice, and kind of elevate your game because it is very competitive these days. And I'm on the ice now, and I feel kind of old, even though I'm only 28 with some of the 20-year-olds in this league. But yeah. they got a lot of skill. Um, they're fast, lots of energy. And it's uh, it's definitely an adjustment from when I first came into the league a couple of years back playing playing against some guys, for sure. So, I I think our our style of play is very similar. Um, whatever amount of skill that's needed for whatever level we were playing, we just had enough, and then and then we got our foot in the door, and then we kind of got comfortable. But uh, when did the physical part of the game? Uh, do you remember becoming important to you? Because uh, I remember the exact day uh, and how you know how old I was when it became important to me. Uh, how about you? It's it's always been something that I've had in me. There wasn't like a specific time I kind of made a switch. Like my my mom said, even when I was like two and three years old, I like would randomly just go and just hammer kids at the park. Like it's kind of messed up to, to say and kind of funny <laughs> to laugh about now, but like you said, I always had like this bone in my body where I just wanted to like, just, you know, throw a shoulder into someone. So um, <laughs> I've seen some clips from when I was really young playing on the ice and, you know, I'd come across like Scott Stevens and just hammer a guy. And I don't remember doing it because I was only about maybe five or six oh, years wow. old, but um, yeah, it's just something that's kind of been in my, in my blood. And, you know, as you know, how competitive the game is back then and, and it is now like you need an edge and you need something that separates you from everyone else. And for me, it's just playing hard and physical, which a lot of guys do, but it's the open ice hits and, you know, really making making guys, you know, check who's on the ice and making sure that they know when you are on the ice that uh, that separated me. And ultimately, I think that's I, I truly believe that's why, you know, I'm, I'm here playing pro hockey in San Diego. That's why I got NHL deals over the years. And that's why I got a scholarship just because of how hard I play and, and how, how hard I hit. So, um, yeah, that's just one thing that's, that's really been in my blood as long as I can remember. Yeah. I, 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 for me, it, it was never, I mean, scoring goals, you get a, a point once in a while, that was great. But if I had a, a, a big hit every game, that was like, I scored a goal. Were you, are you the same way? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not looking to score goals. It's nice every now and again. I don't think I have too many in pro hockey, but I have quite a few hits. Um, and whether people know it or not, when you when you hit someone pretty hard, they they remember it forever. So uh, <laughs> that's one thing I got going for me. And I know you you had that going for you. So yeah, definitely like scoring a goal. Yeah, and you know it it kind of goes that that was you know I chuckle about it because that's exactly how I was but then I had kids and my kids are going to be playing and they're undersized and there's going to be guys like us that they're going to be playing against that's how I got into okay how can I prepare these guys to be able to defend themselves and I was always trying to study the guys that I, I could hit and then one day it finally clicked for me why am I focusing on those guys focus on the guys that I could never hit and then all of a sudden it, it yeah. came to me, you know, they, they had their head up and were confident when they had the puck in their stick all the time. And they just would never put themselves in a position where they could take a, a direct hit. It was always just a glancing blow and man, did that frustrate me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, definitely. Yeah. You got to pick and choose your spots for sure. When some of those, those good players are on the ice. Yeah. So I, I was in my, um, fifth or sixth year 
sixth year, sixth or seventh year. I was 27 years old before I got my first NHL opportunity. You're 28 years old. You you got a you're dealing with an injury right now. You might be able to get back uh, to finish out the season, but um, do you still have the dream to play in the NHL? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, awesome. it's still there. Like you're just you're just so close, right? Like you're literally a couple injuries away or one phone call away, and you know you're right there. I, I was pretty close. Um, during the COVID year, I was literally the next the next guy Nashville had to call up. So I was just waiting for that call, but it never uh, never came, or you know, never came yet. So yeah, it's uh, it's still there. I'm still working every day on it, and, and uh, doing what I can to you know be ready when my uh, when my name's called. Yeah, you never know when that opportunity is going to come, and uh, you know, do it on your terms, man, um, and don't give up because mm-hmm. it's just. <laughs> hockey is such a great game because you could have the worst game going of your life and you only need one shift to make it a great game. And you only need one yeah. opportunity to change the trajectory. So um, keep on rocking it, man. I'll be pulling for you as always. I appreciate that. Thanks, Lance. So how was uh, your, you got a uh, an injury. I don't know if you want to uh, say what it is, but, it's a, it's a lengthy one. Um, how has that been? I mean, have you had some other injuries or challenges in the past that have helped prepare you for, for this lengthy one? Uh, has there been some peaks, valleys? Tell me a little bit about how, how you deal with things upstairs in your brain. Yeah, so that's been, it's been tough. So um, yeah, I, I feel comfortable saying it just like it's my left, my left uh, labrum there. I tore that, and so basically was told earlier this this season I wouldn't be able to to play for quite a while, um, you know, four to five month recovery. And so we're we're getting close, but it looks like it's going to be pretty tight to get me in at the end of the season, unless there's a, a playoff run here, which I'm still hoping for. But no, to your to your question, Lance, I haven't had a lengthy injury like this ever. Um, I will say being in San Diego helps because you see the sun every day, and you can go walk on the beach, and you know, kind of keep saying that way yeah. instead of being in a cold dark dark spot you know where you don't see the sun every every day so that's definitely played a factor in health but um no it's it's tough i mean I, obviously you want to be on the ice plan but what i do to keep busy is, is work my business i read a lot of books um i actually am doing kind of like a mental training program with a lot of visualization so i'm gonna feel hopefully pretty sharp when i get back on the ice sure. you know like, like i've already been doing doing all that stuff over the past few months um but yeah, it's uh, it's been tough, but doing what I can to get back and rehabbing every day and just trying to stay positive. That's awesome. So you talked about reading, and that's that's one thing. Uh, if you're going to be a professional athlete, I think is a requirement because there's 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 just so much time, you know, downtime either on a bus or a plane in a hotel, and you got to stay sane and occupy your time in a positive way. So. Uh, give me, I always love to hear what people are reading. You got a good book you've been reading. You can talk a little bit about. Yeah, for sure. So I've read, I've read three books actually. I'll, I'll hit you with, um, the first one is called the obstacles, the way I think it's by Ryan holiday. It's just basically like little segments of, of different people over time, um, who have faced obstacles and kind of how they've got through them. And I think it's kind of fitting just with, you know, having a labrum surgery and needing a lot of, a lot of time to repair. It's a pretty big, big obstacle to overcome. So that's one book. Um, I just finished this book called Breathe. It's by, uh, by James Nestor. It's really interesting just about how certain people are mouth breathers versus nasal breathers and uh, how it kind of affects your, like your face shape and you know, your, your blood oxygen levels and all that stuff and how you can kind of get yourself an edge by, um, depending, like depending on how you breathe, it'll give you give you an edge or not. So that's that's the second one. And then the third one I read earlier this year, I believe it's called Why We Sleep, and it just basically talks about you know how important sleep is, staying off the video games, staying off the caffeine if you can, all these little things that kind of can help you just be more prepared for when you're when you're back on the ice. So I would say those three books are the ones I've I've read so far, and they've uh, they've helped kind of put things perspective and then 
gave me some some things to work and try when I'm on the ice, off the ice, going to bed, in the gym, or you know whatever it might be. That's awesome. I, I obstacles the way I read that. Love it. Uh, breathe. I haven't, but interesting that you 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 talk about that the import, importance of breath and if you breathe through your mouth or through your nose. I was just listening to a podcast and they were talking about breathing. Uh, and when you're a mouth breather, that's kind of a, a, uh, a flight or, f- uh, fight or flight response. You know, that's what happens when yeah. you get scared, but the, you know, I guess we're more efficient if you're a nose breather and they recommend that you should try to sleep with your, uh, with your mouth closed. And they actually say, put some, uh, medical tape on your mouth. So you can't to help yeah. you with that. Did you have to do that? No, I, I've honestly been pretty good with being a nose breather um, my whole life. Like I don't snore really. If I do, it's probably because I'm breathing through my mouth because my nose is a bit plugged. But um, it's definitely something that I, I would do, and I still might, you know, explore a little bit. But I've been pretty fortunate where I don't have to uh, to, co- to cover the mouth. I do a lot of, of nasal breathing as it is. Okay, awesome. All right, so pretty cool that you talk. Uh, the other book is Why We Sleep. Um, yeah. I like that as well because uh, the professional life is, uh, you know, you you got to sleep when you can. I mean, it's not like you can go to bed at eight o'clock or nine o'clock every night. So, you know, that's a big thing is uh, better understanding uh, how you can optimize, you know, the sleep, whatever your schedule is. The one thing I want to ask you, especially now that you're uh, on, on the IR is, you know, uh, when did nutrition become really important to you because i remember seeing you and you shredded i mean you you took care of your body and you know that takes work yeah honestly i was pretty fortunate that i grew up in a household where you know i was a pretty big emphasis just eating healthy staying active um not a lot of fast food so my mom definitely cooked like most of the meals at home uh, minimal ingredients all that kind of stuff so i just kind of always had eaten that way and and I just am very I guess health conscious about like what I put in my body so I try and be you know natural a lot of a lot of fruits vegetables all that kind of stuff and stay away from the the processed foods so I've always been that way um you know I just I take my health very seriously and it's kind of why I'm reading all these books and it kind of goes you know ties all together but for me I, I don't think there's really one moment where I switched how I ate and I mean I definitely do you know, splurge sometimes, like all of ice cream, all of pizza, all that stuff. It just, it's the consistency of eating, um, you know, healthy most times is, is what's hard. And that's what I've kind of just learned to do through, through what my mom fed us, um, growing up. And I'm very thankful for that because to your point, I've, I put a lot of work into, to being active and, and healthy and, you know, being the best I can be on the ice and off the ice. And I think nutrition is, is very important. So, um, yeah, like if you can, if you can eat, eat healthy and stay committed to that, that's going to take you very, very far, um, especially if you go to play pro hockey. Yeah, and it's, but it's, it's life. I mean, if you don't have your, your health, you don't have anything. I mean, you're a hockey player until you're hurt like you. Then you're not a hockey player anymore, are you? <laughs> you right. <know? laughs> and that's an injury, but some of this stuff is because self-inflicted because we, we don't pay attention and eat, eat – uh, how we should be, uh, and and that's difficult. But uh, you know, I'm glad that you know it's it, it's something that I think athletes, especially hockey players, need to start understanding at a younger age because you know the the players are so skilled now, and you know the the stakes are heavy. And the other thing is, as you know. You know, when you're you're an athlete, there there's a shelf life. You can't play this till you're 50 years old. So, are you gonna right. be someone that is gonna try to go for you know exceptional status, uh, or are you gonna just be a little above, you know, average or mediocre? And you got to dial mm-hmm. all these things in. You know, and, and nutrition is a huge part of it, and sleep. So you're you're passing on the right stuff to the people that are listening. So thank you. <laughs> yeah i mean like even if you if you were not a hockey player right just in your everyday life i just say get up see the sun go for a walk just 
get the get the body moving but yeah if you can you can dial in your sleep and get as much as you need and eat healthy i think just you know, the longevity of your life and the quality of your life is going to be a lot better and it doesn't take much i think it's just small things every day but you start to build on that and then before you know it you're uh you're feeling better and looking better than you ever had before and it's all just from you know diet and sleep yeah it's uh it's pretty amazing i've um after i retired and you know i i got away from you know being semi-disciplined and eating how i should be and my kids started you know getting into that and that's how it you know changed and in probably six years, I've lost 40 pounds and have kept it off. Um, and I, mm-hmm. I feel really good, feel really good. So all you young guys doing it, it, it rubs off on us old people too. So thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's uh, good. I want to talk about the Sports Ox app because, like I said, uh, what I love about it is that it helps other hockey players. So that's that's uh, that's a business that can't help or can't uh, fail when you're helping others but when did you conceive it what's the premise and then uh just talk a little bit about uh how people can use it for sure so yeah so i developed a company called sports aux aux it's short for auxiliary which essentially my goal with it was just to connect players and parents with the information they need to make the most informed decision while going through the recruitment process. And then also have coaches and agents connect uh, with each other and players, um, you know, the same way when they're, when they're going through the recruitment process. So I'll take you back to when I was in Sherwood park and I wasn't really getting recruited and wasn't really sure what my hockey future was going to, was going to look like. And when I made the world junior A challenge and I came back to play with my, my junior club, I had lots of schools interested in me and approaching me and coming to watch me. And I also had lots of agencies. And so my dad never played at a high enough level where he needed an agent and my grandpa, uh, you know, he never really needed an agent in his day. So I was kind of just like not really sure where to go and had no resource to go to when I'm being approached by these different agencies and and these coaches. So we actually met with uh, one agency in the lobby and you know they're salesmen so they're giving you the pitch you know bring it bring you on as a client we can do this this and this here's where we see you and at the end of the conversation my mom jokingly said like oh we'll look you up on like ratemyagent.com and this agent's this agent's look was pretty pretty surprised like (laughs) he's almost like been like never heard that before obviously and was kind of concerned maybe about what someone had had said about him so that was kind of uh that was kind of thrown by the wayside and didn't think much of it until the summer when he was in town, he came to visit again and we're just sitting around the table. And almost the first thing he mentioned when he got in the house was there's no such thing as like a rate, my agent for hockey agents. And he was like, like, I'm like, wow, that's still on his mind after, you know, two months, like there might be, there might be something there to work with. So um, I kind of had, had a conversation with my mom after he left saying like, well, there's no real resource for players or parents to use when they're dealing with these coaches and agents. And maybe there's a platform like raymyprofessor.com for, for college profs that could be, you know, brought to light. So I kind of went to the drawing board a little bit then and just threw out some rough ideas and threw out some sketches of what it, what it could be. But it wasn't until my sophomore year, uh, the summer after my sophomore year, where again i had played well but i wasn't sure if if hockey was going to be in my future if i was going to get an nhl deal if i was going to go play pro hockey and even if it did work out i'm kind of like well what am i gonna do after hockey so i've always been business minded i've had you know lots of different things in the past uh, that we haven't talked about that has kind of put me in the entrepreneurial spirit but i just put down on paper basically everything i wanted the sports ox to be and how it could help players parents coaches agents connect with not only information but like stats on one another uh, video highlights just make it a one-stop shop for anything recruitment related and so it was basically done drawn up uh by the end of my my junior year this is high school and uh, no this is uh at ohio state okay yeah so so it was um, not until I signed after my senior year with Calgary where I had a little bit of 
a little bit of money. I had a pretty good signing bonus and everything. So I was actually in Stockton and was kind of like, you know what? I've, I put some investments into the market and they haven't been as good as I wanted to be. So I'm going to kind of bet on myself. And I went down and met with a couple of com- com- uh, companies in Palo Alto who uh, were in the Silicon Valley who dealt with apps specifically and kind of got a feel for who I'd wanted to work with. And, and basically what happened was I started having them develop my, my app. So I got the first half of what I had envisioned done um, probably about a year and a half in and started, you know, growing it, getting lots of players on there, lots of reviews. But I actually ran into a bit of trouble uh, financially because, as you know, if you start a business, everything costs more money than than you like it to. So I need to find an investor. And so for about two years through COVID, I had to, had to find some money and raise some capital. And honestly, it was very hard because – not a lot of people were you know, willing to lend money at a time like that. Mm-hmm. And it was a concept that people didn't really understand unless they played hockey or played, you know, played professional sports and needed an agent. So I did end up getting some financing after about two years and I got great business partners now. So the development continued and actually just, uh, just last month we finished, basically what I had envisioned when I first started, you know, drawing this thing up back when I was, uh, back when I was 18. And so right now, very high level, the sports ox is essentially like LinkedIn crossed with rate my professor for hockey players. So players, coaches, agents can all go on there, request verification. And once they're accepted, they can, well, they can message one another and receive messages and all that stuff. But players can anonymously rate and review their past and current coaches and agents. And then coaches can actually rate and review their past and current players. So um, for me, I look at it like this is going to help like parents and players going through the recruitment process, see what this coach is all about and you know, give them a, a really good insight of what things are like once they get to school or once they get to that team. And for, on the flip side of that, coaches can now look at kids and see what they're like you know, kind of behind the scenes. And if I've talked to um, Nashville's assistant, assistant GM, Scott Nickel, and he's always, you know, asking, asking guys what this guy's like in the room, what's he's like outside the rink. And so I think if you're a GM or someone who's got to recruit players all the time to have kind of that extra tool to really validate what you're seeing, I think it's going to help a lot of players actually get recruited who maybe wouldn't get recruited because their skill is just, um, you know, just subpar. Uh, compared to other guys so right now that's that's live it's fully functioning we've got tons of players on there um there's there's, there's stats there's there's um there's like video highlights that players can can put on there's their contact information their parents contact information they can put their school information on there their graduation date so coaches know when they can contact them um and just a whole lot of stuff that's going to really help anyone who's looking to recruit players find the information they need in, in one consolidated spot, but then also have players be able to self promote and reach out to these different coaches and agents and say, you know, Hey, come watch me. And, um, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll be something that really picks up here in the next, next little while. And, you know, kind of changes the way that recruiting is done in the hockey world. That's so awesome. Um, I can see the benefit of, on the boys' side, you know, when you're dealing with family advisors until college is done, then it's an agent. But uh, yep. can you just touch, because you do, you have a feature that obviously helps the, the females as well, right? Can you talk a little bit more about that yep. and uh, how that can really help them? Because I actually just got a text yesterday asking from a dad saying, how can I help my daughter get ex- some exposure? Yeah. So, so definitely. So it's, it's kind of going to be very similar to, to the boys. Like we have our database filled with, filled with players, coaches, agents, scouts, teams, team personnel, um, you know, the whole, the whole deal. But uh, with my sister being a professional player and kind of going through the process, I know it's just as hard for them to get, to get seen. I think it might even be harder um, if they're up in Canada is because I don't think a lot of teams travel up here to, to recruit them, but Again, they can log in, they can get verified and update everything they they want to on their 
on their recruitment tab. So when a school is, you know, trying to find them or trying to find more information on them, they can see their video highlights, um, again, school information, who their strengths, skating skills, coaches are, parents information, current coach information, um, and just make it really, really easy for that coach to find everything they need to take that next step to either make a call with the player or their parents or that coach and really streamline that recruitment process. So in a nutshell, a player can go on there and really just put together uh, their best foot uh, with all the information, video highlights. So a coach or a recruiter can go on there and really get a deep dive to see what type of player this is. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's it. And, and the best part is like most people who play it at a high level um, already have a profile on there. So if you're, like, if you're playing high school hockey in Minnesota, you know, girls or boys, like you're going to have a profile on the sports ox. So all you have to do is go on there and just verify it and then you can just add to it. Um, but it's just, it's a great tool as well for recruiters and fans and really anyone to keep track of, of players. So we have a feature where you can follow players across all leagues and levels worldwide, and you can see their season stats and also the recent stats of these players. So if you're a recruiter and you're keeping track of, you know, 15 players, that's pretty tough to do if you don't have a consolidated way of, of really seeing how they're doing on a nightly basis. But with the sports ox, you can literally pull up the app and see, again, worldwide, basically all the box scores and how they did just specific to your players and then shoot them a note saying, you know, hey, so I had a good game or so I had a good week or good weekend or whatnot, which, again, really strengthens that that bond when you are trying to recruit a player because then the player feels like, oh, he's actually watching me. Whether you see the game or not, you're keeping up to date with way more way more players than you possibly could have at, you know, at one time. And Certainly. I think that'll help a lot of recruiters get the players they want. Yeah. Great idea. Um, and you just made uh, answering a question <laughs> very easy for me. I'm just going to point them over to uh, your your deal. So is it Ox or AUX is how I should say it? Sports AUX or Sports Ox? Uh, it's a Sports Ox, but sometimes people will kind of mix it up with OX, like okay. uh, like the Ox, like the animal. So um, I usually just say, yeah, the Sports Ox, AUX, just so people uh, hear it once. Yep. Um, and again, that's short for auxiliary, which is what we're trying to do, just connecting people with each other, information, and really just streamlining the whole recruitment process for, for hockey. Yeah, we'll put that, uh, I'll put that in the, the description to, to make it really easy for, for people wanting to learn more. Uh, is there anything else? Do you, uh, are you involved in any charities? Is there anything else you want to uh, let our listeners in on before we wrap this thing up? There's nothing right now that I'm really, uh, really involved with. I know like down the road, I definitely want to get more involved with some stuff and I have some plans for, for the sports ox to kind of give back to the community once we're, once we're making some, some revenue, but, um, uh, no, I like, I, I really appreciate having you have me on and, you know, kind of glad I can share my story and kind of what I'm doing right now outside of hockey. And then also sharing some books that, um, uh, I've been reading that have helped me with hockey too. So, it's uh it's been fun i'm gonna throw those books in the old uh description as well for you um i'll i'll text you just to make sure that i got the the names right i think the only one i need is why we sleep i want to make sure we're on that so um well josh i want to congratulate you on a hockey career that is in still in progress and wish you a speedy recovery so you can get back to it and continue to chase your dream my friend uh, it's a fun ride. Uh, continue on as long as you can. Also, uh, I look forward to seeing how the Sports Ox AUX app evolves in the near future. I know it's going to be a huge success because the business is built on helping others. And when that happens, like I said, you just can't fail. Uh, let me know if there's anything or anything I can do to down the road to, to help you with that. And basically to wrap it up, continued success and thanks again for being here and sharing your story i appreciate that coach lance it's uh it's always a pleasure we'll, we'll stay in touch for sure and look forward to uh to connect with connecting with you again awesomeness all right thanks again for taking the time absolutely anytime
Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed the Josh Healy Hockey Journey. And don't forget to check out his hockey player helping company, the Sports Ox AUX app. Also, if you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon, and do me a favor, make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.